and welcome to Inside the WSL. We're back on the road this week and we're in Liverpool, Toxteth to be exact. We're bringing two sisters back to their roots to find out how growing up here made them into the successful sports stars they are today. It has come home. The Lionesses win their first ever major tournament. Miss GB, a double world champion. Tash Keats, now I know this place means an awful lot to you. You spent a lot of time here uh, as kids and you've obviously made an impression on the place, Keats, because there's a mural of you on the wall. That's how you know you've made it in life. <laughs> <laughs> to be on the front and the back of the building, I must have done something right. But no, with this pitch, we refurbished it um, with Puma um, in order to give the kids somewhere to play, not just inside but outside, give them more space and that means more kids can keep coming. Just take me back to that moment when you're at the Euros. Your team were in the final. <laughs> And the referee blows the final whistle. How's it oh, feel? I d the only thing I remember is relief. <laughs> relief that we finally did it because the amount of people that kept interviewing and asking us, when are you going to get to a final? When are you going to win a medal? It's been since 1966. And, and that just obviously plays on your mind. And when Serena came in, she asked us all as individuals, what do you want to achieve? And the first thing we all said was we were desperate to win a medal. And she was like, you mean you're desperate? And we was like, no, we are desperate. <laughs> and she, even at the end of the final, she was like, I don't just see how you are desperate, the whole country was desperate. And I think it was just the best feeling in the world. You got the medal, haven't you? Yeah. Come on, you got to get it out. Let's have it. I'm surprised it's not on your neck already. <laughs> Don't you just walk around the street with it on? Oh, no. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, it is. Look at that. Tash, when you saw that and you saw that your little sister has become a European champion, how did it feel for you? Oh, proud. And I think relief as well because you know what they go through. You just want them to do well. I wasn't ready for the amount of emotions <laughs> I went through on that day, to be fair. They scored, they scored, they scored. I was like, ah! <laughs> so yeah, it was it was it was topped off. It was, by, it it was yeah. great. It was a great day, a great night, wasn't it? And a great occasion. Yeah. And then a few weeks later, some success for you as well. Just WBC well, yeah. Super Welterweight Champion. I mean, how much was you inspired by what Keats had done? I think I made some like tongue-in-cheek remarks about the local paper that I couldn't let her have all the success <laughs> for that day. Um, but it was just that, just tongue-in-cheek. Of course, the the whole country was on a high. Women's sports was was on a roll and you, you have to just keep it going. I watched it with the team, actually, we was on camp, and Serena was like, what are we all watching? And I'm like, go on, just hit, just hit, just hit. I don't know much about boxing tactics. <laughs> all I was saying, just attack, attack. <laughs> and the girls were all laughing, but when she won, I was, I was emotional, so proud. And I think, for me, it was just watching her, how far she's come, it's been unbelievable. Yeah, I feel like both of you have been spurring each other on throughout your careers. Yeah, well, a little well, bit competitive, just, just a little bit. Just a little, <laughs> just a little, but I mean, I've had the best inspiration right next to me for since I was born, so it's always been a competition, oh, always been a cool fight. On, <laughs> and no, I'm proud of everything that she's achieved, not just, obviously starting football, then went to boxing, and to do that in two sports, it's, it's amazing. You did start in football. What made you make that decision that you wanted to, you know, focus on boxing? It was an injury um, when I was uh, abroad in America, and... Um, at that time, it was a career-ending injury, so when I came back, you know, I'd lost the whole friendship group. I'd lost, I'd put on a lot of weight because I didn't do sports because of the injury for a whole year. And some woman just bugged me to stop training by myself in my uncle's gym and come to the local boxing gym. And I thought to myself, boxing, like, who wants to get punched <laughs> in the face? Like, I didn't have any intentions of ever keeping it going, but she bugged me and bugged me that much, I thought, I'm going to go. So then the next time she asked me, I was just going to say, I didn't like it, I don't, I don't want to go back. And that was 17 years ago, and I'm still here. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And it was obviously a good decision to make. The UBC Super Welterweight belt, we've actually got, you've actually brought it with you today. Let's just have a look at this, because this is something special. Just... So Keats becomes European champion. I'm and just then... going to put my one medal <laughs> away, <laughs> and let's just celebrate real unbelievable success. And then we see the two wow. belts, the latest being the WBC. You already had the WBO. I mean, wow. Keats, it's pretty... It's pretty special, isn't it? Yeah, this is so heavy. Yeah. Wow. I was after 10 rounds telling me to hold it up like this with gloves on, up my high, and I was going, Joe, I can't. Yeah, I was going, Yeah, I can't. It's too heavy, it's too heavy. Oh, nice. But yeah. 
How special is that, That's though? That's special. But this is where it started, isn't it? This is where you, I suppose, learned the discipline and, and the motivation to become sports stars. What is it that this place taught you? I think beyond every sports athlete, there's the person, there's the human being behind it. And I think this is where I learned maturity. This is where I learned about who I am as a person, not really a player. And I think I went through so many ups and downs as a youth, um, just try, trying to stay on the straight and narrow. I think here you could be who you wanted and express, express yourself. That was a, a big thing. You just came here and you was who you are. You're not the one that you're in front of your mum or you're the person that you are in front of your nan or the person that you are in front of your, your schoolmates. You just came here and, and was your true authentic self and there's not no one in, in any of these streets or surrounding area or in this place that wishes you bad. They all want to see you do well. They all want you to, you know, inspire that next generation, which is one of the biggest things that you can that you can do as an athlete. Yeah. yeah. Now I know you're both incredibly proud of Toxtiff. People outside of the city, people outside um, of Liverpool might have a negative perception of it. How aware were you of the negative perception of this place? And did that bother you when you were growing up, Tash? I think you always get the, the jokes, uh, Toxtiff, you know, people remember for the riots and uh, and all the uh, negative press sometimes we get. Do you remember the riots and, and, and what it meant to, to, to this community? What happened exactly? I was born, I think, just after the riots, but we were living in the aftermath of it. So yeah. there was a lot of racial tension. There was a lot of drugs around this area. There was a lot of crime, but that was what it was to everybody else. To me, it was just home and everyone else in it was living through the same thing. So no one judged other people by what it was because everyone was going through the same struggle. And, and again, I think that's the kind of backbone of the city is that we all stick together regardless of what. And it developed you into the person you are? Did it make you stronger because you came from that community? It's easy, you'll say yourself, to fall into a certain role from this area. But I, I made a promise to myself that I wouldn't. And I was looking up to, you know, athletes that, that I seen, like your Kelly Holmeses, you know, like your Sally, Sally Gunnels, and, and I was thinking, like, they're the, who I want to aspire to be like, and I won't let people be able to put barriers up on who I can be just because of where I am, just because of what colour I am, just because of the area that I'm from, or just because of what they think. I, I'll go out and, like I say, express myself and do whatever I can to be the best version of me. We had to just utilise what we did have, and I think that was the big thing about this area. No matter what we had, how little, how small, how beat up, um, you know, we just we just made do with what we had, and we did the best that we could. And I think, you know, giving back that's why I think it's the, one of the most important things. Also, because you can help the next generation have things that you never had growing up. Do uh, do young people today have better resources to be able to achieve what you've achieved? In in all honesty, no. I think, you know, when we we come back and we look at the surrounding areas, the resources that we do have, they're still beat up, they're still less, they're still fighting for funding. You know, you can you can only do what's in your power as an individual, but I think, you know, government needs to step up. So it, it's rare that you two have made it out almost and, and become success. Is it still like a an anomaly almost? I would say it's definitely an anomaly, especially in inner city communities where opportunity, resources, accessibility is so limited. You know, if you do want to see more diversity within sport, then you've got to have more resources, more pots to dip into. So the thing is, if you can see it, you can be it. And I think that's very limited at the moment and we need to, you know, broaden our horizons. Particularly at the top of the women's game? Particularly at the top of the women's game and that, that's something I'm definitely fighting for um, and want to be a part of the change. And I think many people do in the women's game, you know, we do want to see more diversity in sport in the WSL itself, in the youth ranks, in the, the elite clubs, because I think it's important. I wonder if then football can learn a thing or two from boxing, because boxing is more of a diverse sport than football, isn't it, for women? Um, I would say so, but we still have we still have the same problems, you know. We're still you know underappreciated, undervalued, yeah. underpaid, um, and, and we're struggling for for networks. We're struggling for sponsorships. We're struggling for um, big endorsements as as a sport. So we seem in one in one light ahead, but still in others we're we're, we're quite far behind. Yeah, work to be done. Yeah. I bet you're probably glad that she gave up football and went to boxing because then the competition well, way, yeah. <laughs> would have been more intense, right? Would have been fierce. Probably would have had to play in the same position as well, oh. so that would have been a nightmare. She could have taken your spot in England. Yeah, well... There'd be legs flying everywhere. <laughs> <laughs>
Welcome back to Inside the WSL. We're still in Liverpool and we're still on this tour of Topstiff with the city's most famous sporting sisters, Tash and Keats. <laughs> and we've made our way to Kingsley United Football Club. I bet there's a lot of memories for you here, Keats. Yeah, this is where I started my football career. First of all, in boys football. Um, my next door neighbour, Calvin, he was, he was my coach. Um, Earl, who's the head of Kingsley United, um, he basically created teams for kids in the, in the area to, to play football, enjoy football, Sunday league, competing against the rest of the teams in Liverpool, and we'd always win. That's brilliant. And you mentioned Earl. Let's bring Earl in, because I think he's coaching a session. Earl, come and have a chat with us. Now, Earl Jenkins is the, the chair of Kingsley yeah. United, and you've been in and around this club for quite a while, haven't you? <laughs> How long has it been? Getting 25 on for 30 years. Wow, that is yeah, a long time. And you used to coach Keats. I Tell did. me, what was she like back then? <laughs> well, let's just say I was about the seventh coach <laughs> to coach that team because that team were notoriously hard for coaching. <laughs> so it stopped at the end of the line with me when they went through about another what, 10 coaches. Ill, Ill discipline from Keats? Not, no, not so much. Not so much. <laughs> she kind of maintained order with me at times, but she was mischievous as well. She had her moments. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, definitely. definitely. But you know the family well because I know you used to babysit young Tash as well, didn't you? I did indeed. <laughs> I did indeed. You're making me feel old now. But yeah, definitely I did. <laughs> and how important is a place like this for the community? For me, I, I will say priceless because any young person needs to belong to something. They need discipline. They need certain things within their life for them to be successful. Now, these two have been fortunate enough to have that self-discipline and make them sacrifices and the things they've done to get to the top of the game. But we're not all about creating people for the top of the game. If they get there, fantastic. But we just want to create like good people, you know. So not so much riding on the football side of things, but every kid here, as you can see, they turn up in the droves. They love it, they enjoy it, and they stay safe. In the club, in the past, we've had doctors, we've had solicitors, we've had people who run their own school get into education. So, so I see all them people as success stories, as well as obviously these two. And what's the take up uh, amongst young girls? Funny enough, the, the uptake on young girls recently is, has, has gone up. I don't why know why, I can't think why. <laughs> but yeah, a, a certain person snuck to my training session without telling me. And, and, and got photos with the girls. And the first thing I seen was text messages. And yeah, I think, I think she inspired some girls to get into football. It's important to inspire the next, next generation, but I just turned up with my little niece. She's, she's seven and I wanted to get into football. I'm trying to, to push it in. And um, yeah, it was so nice to see the young girls and they were so happy to see me, which, you know, it was quite surreal to be honest. And I think being a role model to anyone is a surreal moment for you. Oh, it's been great to talk to you. I know you've got a session to run, so I'll let you get away, but thank you so much for coming on and, and giving, giving us some of your time. Tash, you also played football here before you got into boxing, and this was an important place for you to develop as a person as well, wasn't it? Yeah, like I said, you, you come here, you, like, you express yourself, you know, play up to who you want to be. I think uh, mine was Mia Ham. That, I, that was oh, who I wanted to be. That was your role model? That was who I was being every time I come in. I was going to be better, I was going to do better. Who are your role models? Terry Henry and Julie Fleeton. Nice. Julie Fleeton was my hero. I used to watch her um, FA Cup final once every year on TV, the only women's football. Um, game. She could be out the game 70 minutes. At the end of the game, she scored a hat-trick and she's lifting the trophy. For me, I just wanted a beer. Where would you be if this place hadn't existed? To be honest, I don't know. I think, you know, when you're younger and you're in the community, you just want to feel like you, you belonged. And I think without, without football, without Kingsley United, you know, people who invested so much, they always say it takes a community to raise one child and honestly to raise me was very <laughs> difficult <laughs> and they'll tell you a liar and then when i was younger and there was no longer i could no longer play with in boys football i created my own football team with ill and that was massive you know for him to believe in me and want to push me to be the best i needed other girls and my sister became a defender she'd score all the <laughs> own goals so i'd have to go to the top and score all the other goals and my cousins was the goalkeeper and just anyone i could pick off the streets out of the youth center like come try this game come come to this state training session and you know we got 13 14 girls and you know we won many competitions and many league games so so proud of us when i think about 
the women they are now and, and the girls they were then, it's hysterical to think that he was in that actual <laughs> team. <Yeah. laughs> it's nice to see that the sports grew and, you know, now you have school girls, my, like my little girl, again, I've tried to drag into a football. <laughs> I wanted to do a sport that I like, so I've dragged her along to football. She, I mean, she must look up to Keats. As she's six, isn't she, your daughter? She's six, yeah. She's look, she must be looking up to Keats thinking, I could be a European champion. Keats is her favourite person in the world. Like, <laughs> I can win whatever I want and call them, you know, Mila, this is for you and all that. And if Keita just comes on the telly and she's like, Mom, Mom, yeah. like, that's my auntie, that's my auntie. <laughs> it's brilliant that she has that. You, you ask her about who her football idol is and her first go-to is a woman, it's not it's not a man. Uh, so Keita, as Tash was saying there, you are a big role model for her daughter. Do you take that responsibility seriously? It's definitely a responsibility that I had to grow into and had to mature into because when you're young and you're playing football, you don't expect people to see themselves in you and want to be like you or want to be, I always say be better than me and I think as you get older and you understand like your behaviours your actions do impact another person's life that's a huge responsibility to take on. You don't ever ever see yourself as that you're just a normal person athlete in that moment doing the best you can on the field and you don't expect to have an effect on, on other people's lives and how they perceive you but once you do realise that you do that it, it can also I'm not saying it's a burden in a negative way, but it's a, it's a, it's a big thing to carry because n now you're not only carrying who you are, you're also carrying black women, you're also carrying talk stuff, you're also carrying Liverpool, you're also carrying your club, your country and everything else. And I think you can, you know, help create more equality, more diversity, help young people see that there is a pathway in women's football. What is that pathway like now? How diverse is it? How easy is it for another young black or mixed race girl to think, I want to make it to the top, I want to play for England? I think currently it is possible, it, but it's a harder road, harder road if you come from an inner city, more diverse backgrounds, where the accessibility is, the distance is too far. I mean, I as a mother wouldn't allow my child to travel an hour and a half to two hours on a train there and back from training if you're from an inner city in London or an inner city in Liverpool and them training grounds are out in the sticks. It's not possible. We need to find ways where we can have transport for these young girls that, you know, can go on a trial and show them what they have. Because I do think there's a lot of unearthed talent in England that we're not really tapping into because they're not having the opportunity to do so. So are you a footballer or are you a black footballer? I'm a black footballer. I'm a black woman. Black is who you are, not what you are. And that's how you would describe yourselves? Yeah. Now, as role models, I know giving back is really important to you. So how do you go about doing that? I'll always come back and, you know, stop in at sessions. But for me, most importantly, is how I can create better facilities for the next generation. I like to be able to, you know, create a pathway where kids can come and have fun. And as I say, when government funding's being picked out, it's not coming to talk stuff. So how, how can I best help the community? So as Earl was saying, Tash, He's seen more and more girls take up football. If you think back to a few weeks ago in the boxing ring, we saw record viewing for Clarissa Shields against Savannah Marshall. How big is women's sport in this country at the moment? It's flying at the minute. Elite women being successful and being visible is huge for the young girls that are looking up to it, and boys. You know, we are in male-dominated sports. This can't just be a female-only movement. We have to have the, the male support as well. When you get that, like, crest of the wave, you've got to keep riding it. You know, all them barriers that we had at the start, you know, people aren't interested, it doesn't sell, it doesn't do this, it doesn't do that. We're slowly challenging that, that ideology and now you can see it, you know, women's boxing, women's football at its elite is just as good and as valuable and commercially viable as, as the men's. Tash used to play football. Have you ever thought about getting in the ring? No. Putting on the gloves? <laughs> Never. <up>? No? <laughs> I remember we went to a one boxing session, one. and For after training? Just for training. After 10 minutes? I was like, I'm out of here, I'm done. <laughs> this is really not for me. Not for you. No, it's a different type of fitness. You know what, it gave me a different type of appreciation for the work and the effort that Tash puts in each and every day to be where she is today. I was speaking to quite a few people that have known you over the years and the one thing that, that everyone is saying is that you haven't changed and you're still just as humble uh, and welcoming to people as you've always been. Have you made it a, a point to stay grounded? How does that happen when you reach the elite level like you two have? I think when you've got a family, family. Like I was going to say, are. the first thing I was going to say is the family. I yeah. think as soon as you've got a family like we have, there is no way you <laughs> be not humble, humble because they'll bring you down very quickly. And I think that's I, what's important. Yeah. I remember when we first lost and you like people, will, everybody else around you will be like trying to go around the subject. 
my, my family was just like, don't do that because I'll punch you like Katie did. <laughs> and I was like, it was just like, yeah, this is, I'm back home. Yeah, yeah. I know where I am and Ouch. I know where my place is. <laughs> Obviously, they're always very supportive, but you know, there's, there's, there's that thing about, about family. Nobody else sees you. So they, they go through that with you and, and you could never be above yourself because they, they'd bring you down a peg or two. Whether that's comedy or whether that's just straight telling you. That's what I've always grown up like. My brother's got it, Tash got it, I'll get it. My kids will get it, my niece will get it. Because I think in order to grow up a person, you've got to be able to be told what, what's right and what's wrong and how you can improve. And no one really wants to hear that, especially not when you've, when you've just lost or when things aren't going your way. But ultimately, that's only what makes you stronger. There's something that it instills in you that not an else could. And there's what, what Elle was saying earlier about all the, the things that sport offers and football offers outside of just, you know, being good at that one skill. You know, you are disciplined, you are, you know, you're on time and you, you're dedicated and you can work as a team, you can work by yourself. These are all life skills that, that only sport can teach you. We finally got a chance to sit down after all the walking and talking I've made you do all day. Auntie and your cousin run this place and they said that they get people coming from as far as Wales <laughs> to come and try the food, so it must be good. Yeah, the food's lovely and it's, well, you know, cooked with love and good ingredients, but I think, you know, from a community standpoint that, you know, when we went into the lockdowns and, you know, um, schools were shut and, and you know, there was governmental decisions that were made that were maybe some kids would have went hungry. Ray Ray's was one of the places within our community that offered a free lunch and dinner to all school kids of, of certain ages. So, you know, not only is he a, a thriving business within the community, but he's giving back as well when, when it needs it. Because, you know, as, as we keep on saying, you know, it takes more than one person to raise a kid in, in, in these areas. That's been a common theme of today, is that sense of community in Toxtiff. Like, it just, it's unmatched. I think it is a match and I think also you need to understand that, you know, there are families that are going to be struggling throughout this winter, previously, the, through the lockdown, you know, live, cost of living's going up, but then when you've got people in the community who are warm-hearted, understanding and want to give back, that's what we see and that's how we want to, that's how we want to reciprocate what they do and how, how we how we go forward. That's how you see Toxic. You see it in this positive light. It's made you who you are. It's made you the strong, successful young woman that you are. But people outside of Toxic don't necessarily have that view. But, but what is Toxic really like, Tash? Um, it's a, a melt pot of, you know, cultures, faiths, religions, people, ideologies, views, and, and we make it work and get along as, as best we can with the limited facilities and accessibility that we have. Mm -hmm. But I think being from the community helps you further understand the community. So when, when your people are in need, you know, you, you do give back. That's why we come back. That's why we never leave, if I'm True. honest. Yeah. There's so much that you've achieved and I still feel like you're both determined to achieve even more. And you've already achieved above and beyond. Mm -hmm. Not just for yourselves, not just for the black community, but for women in this country and worldwide. What you've achieved is absolutely phenomenal. Are you proud of yourselves? It's a hard question to answer because when you're the person in the, all you see is the hard work you put in, you don't really have a reflection on that time until obviously you've retired. But when I look at Tash, I'm inspired. I'm proud, very proud, very, very proud. And I probably don't tell her often enough actually, but to see my big sister on, at the top of her game on the big stage is a competitive edge for me to want to get there too. And yeah, I'm thankful to have her in the, in the family and someone I can look up to. And I'm sure plenty of young girls across the country, across the world will look up to her. You should be proud of yourself as well though, Keith. <laughs> I'm, listen, I'm very proud, Keith. Um, it's so easy to, to, to fall into traps coming from this area and, and um, living up mm. to stereotypes mm. and, 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 and you know, falling into them things and she's done everything within her power to, to not do that and to be her own person and to express herself on a football field and, and on other places. Walk around here and everywhere with her chin held high. Um, as a big sister looking down at a little sister, like, I am very proud. It's a, an honour to share um, um, the DNA with her. It's an honour to, to watch her still progressing and fight on and, and be 
uh, a legend to so many young females and males. There's men in this game that look up to who she is and, and, and aspire to be here and do what she's done. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's been a journey. It's been an absolute pleasure uh, to spend some time with you. Um, thank you so much for taking me around your hometown. I think this is the perfect time to now eat. Thank you very much, Chef. Well, I think we'll leave it there. They've stopped talking now that they've got food uh, in front of them. That's it for Inside the WSL this week. We'll see you next time. <laughs>